Hello guys and welcome back to another super efficient build guide and today we're looking at supercomputers. Do note that this series aims to cover all the recipes in game using vanilla recipes before going on to touch on alternate recipes. Now this particular build follows on from the computer build that we did last week and also the plastic guide we also covered previously as well and do note that these guides are also available on our website satisfactorytips.com with this layout online soon too. Uh, to gain access to these supercomputers you will need to research the Caterium research tree in the MAM. So let's get started. Now in order to build this factory you will need 312 caterium ore per minute, 155 copper ore, 100 plastic, 10 computers and you'll also need resources for 4 manufacturers, 2 assemblers, 21 constructors and 13 smelters and will require no more than 386 megawatts. This particular build we will be using the manifold system and it is set on a 9 high by 16 wide grid and note that the first column will be bringing in our caterium, our fifth column co copper, our eighth column plastic and finally our thirteenth column computers. This build is quite tight and finicky and complex so I will provide extra photos for placement in the guide on satisfactorytips.com but anyway let's delve into it. First we shall cover the quick wire. Covering the first and second column we will place the first of seven smelters facing the right of the grid. Above this place six more smelters so that they are adjacent to one another. Next, add a manifold splitting line for each of the smelters. On the opposing side, we will also place a merging line flowing to the top of the grid. Ensure for the manifold line that you are using at least the Mark IV belt. And note that these smelters will be set to Caterium ingots and one smelter should be set to 93% underclock. With the Caterium ingots now flowing to the top of the fifth row of the second column, we will now place our nine constructors for quickwire. Place the first constructor in the second column spanning the eighth and ninth row, and in front of this, place a splitter flowing into the constructor. Then place four more splitters parallel to this splitter in the middle of the third, fourth and fifth as well as sixth column flowing to the right of the grid. At this point, place two rows of four constructors. They should start directly to the right of the first constructor with one row flowing to the top of the grid and the second flowing to the bottom with their inputs in line with the splitters we've just placed. Connect all of these with a Mark II conveyor or grater. Set all these constructors to quickwire with a single constructor underclocked to 67% and next merge these all together with mergers flowing with both the bottom and top merging line connecting to a merger flowing to the right of the grid placed in the top left hand corner of the seventh column. The merging line should also be on a Mark V conveyor. Next. In the fourth column, we shall be placing six smelters for our copper. These will be placed opposite the Caterium smelters, starting from the first row up to the fifth row. Next, place a splitting manifold on the input side and a merging line on the output side. For this build, we place the mergers against the Caterium merging line and should also be flowing to the top of the build. These inputs and output lines should be a Mark III conveyor and all the smelters should be set to copper with one of these smelters being set to a 17% clock speed. We will now place our four copper sheet constructors. These should be placed flowing to the right of the build in the first row of the sixth column and these will go all the way up to the fourth row. We will now run a manifold feeding the constructors from the copper smelting line. 
But what's most important about this is to note that we are splitting the copper ingots into a manifold line from the splitter located in the top right hand corner of the fifth column of the fifth row. These constructors should be set to copper sheets and all run at 100% clock speed. Finally, we will add a merging line flowing to the top of the grid. At this point, things are going to start getting very messy very quickly if we're not careful. So in order to make this build easier to follow, we will skip slightly ahead and place the two assemblers and the four manufacturers. The first assembler will be placed from the center of the eighth column across the third and fourth row. This will be set to circuit boards. Next, we shall place the second assembler in line with this assembler with the right hand input over the joint of the fourth and fifth rows. This assembler will be set to AI limiters. We will now place the manufacturer in the top right hand corner of the grid, flowing to the right of the grid and the top side of the manufacturer should be flush against the top side of the grid. We should also make sure that we have enough room for a merger to be placed in front of the manufacturer as we will need them later on. The second manufacturer will need to be in line with the previous manufacturer, again flowing to the right so that the top side of the manufacturer is against the seventh row. Both of these manufacturers will be set to high speed connectors. Finally, we shall place the two manufacturers for supercomputers. Place the first of these two manufacturers in the exact same line, again flowing to the right as the previous manufacturers. To get the right placement, make sure that the center inputs are both centrally located in the second row. Then, for the second manufacturer, we shall place this in the opposite direction, 10 places away from the input side of the first manufacturer. This will give us enough space to place a manifold line between the manufacturers with elevators later on. With the manufacturer placed, we shall now set up the AI limiter and circuit board assembler inputs. First, place a splitter in front of the high speed connector assembler flowing to the right. We will now run the copper sheet line into the splitter, which will then run into the front splitter output into the AI limiter assembler and the second output to the circuit board assembler. At this point, place a splitter directly after the quick wire merger in the top of the seventh column, then bring the bottom output on the splitter straight down and feed the AI limiter assembler. Next, we need to bring the plastic up from the eighth column and up to the circuit board assembler. However, before we do so, place a splitter flowing to the top of the grid against the bottom border of our build. Use the top output to bring the plastic up to the assembler. We will use the right output later on. With the assemblers now connected, we will now place the five constructors for the wire following on to become cable. First, bring the excess copper ingots along and up between the two quick wire conveyors up to the seventh row. We will now place the splitters for the manifold. The first splitter should be placed in the top right hand corner of the seventh row of the eighth column, flowing to the right. Then repeat this in the ninth column. Next, place the constructors, similar to the quick wire constructors, flowing out to the top and bottom of the grid. The fifth constructor should be placed along the top row of constructors, and these should obviously be adjacent to the splitters we've just placed. Next, connect up the manifold line, and we should now be able to bridge the gap between the copper ingots and the manifold line. We will do this with two conveyor elevators and then a short line of conveyor in between. We shall now run a merging line from the bottom of the grid round clockwise so that the conveyor ends at the bottom right edge of the 11th column on the top row. These constructors should all be set to copper wire. Next, we will need to place the 
three cable constructors. I've placed these three along the same bottom constructor line as the wire. Place a splitter in front of the middle constructor and split between the three constructors. They should all be set to cable with one running at 50% clock speed. Finally, merge these together on the opposite side. Once done, we will now need to feed the manufacturers for the high speed connectors. We'll start by placing a splitter flowing to the right of the grid in front of the top manufacturer's bottom input. Feed the middle line into the manufacturer and the bottom output of the splitter into the top input of the below manufacturer. Next, run the quick wire from the splitter in the seventh column of the top row to the splitter we've just placed, following the line of the wire conveyor. Next, we shall run the cable into the manufacturers. First, place a splitter parallel to the bottom manufacturer flowing to the top of the build. This should be placed one step away from the left edge of the 13th column. Now run the cable merger to the splitter. Connect the splitter to the bottom manufacturer, then run a conveyor elevator from the middle splitter and run it up to the top manufacturer's third input. Finally, Place a conveyor elevator in the manufacturer's second input, and this will be run to a splitter that we should place similar to the quick wire splitter, but in front of the bottom manufacturer's bottom input and flowing to the top. This should be connected to the circuit board assembler. Once done, these manufacturers should both be set to high speed connectors and run at 100% clock speed. Finally, we have the supercomputer manufacturers. Directly in between the two lower manufacturers, we will place two splitters flowing to the bottom of the grid in front of the top two inputs, and we will shall place a further two splitters flowing to the top of the grid in front of the bottom two inputs. Then stack the top and bottom splitter three high and delete the two splitters underneath. Then connect both of these splitters with elevators to the two inputs on the top and bottom of both manufacturers. On the two splitters in the center of the build, also connect them to the two middle inputs of both manufacturers. Now from the output of the AI limiter assembler, place a conveyor elevator and run this line all the way to the top splitter. I like to use a right angle here, but you do not need to. Next, bring a line down from the top manufacturer creating high speed connectors all the way down to the next splitter in front of the super computers. Remembering to merge the second high speed connector manufacturer to this line along the way. We will now bring the computers from our previous computer layout build, which you can find in the top right hand corner now if you'd like to check it out, up from the 13th column straight into the ground floor splitter on the bottom half of the build. We shall run a conveyor from the plastic splitter across the bottom of the build and then run it up to the top splitter on the bottom input using a conveyor elevator. Finally, these two manufacturers should be set to supercomputers and you can set them both to 67% clock speed. Finally, merge the lines and take them to a container. I've run mine around above the plastic line to a container, but yours can be wherever you choose. So there you are guys, do note all the lines will saturate as we are using the manifold system, but hopefully you should now be able to produce supercomputers. So there you are guys, sorry for such a long guide, but hopefully you found it helpful. Um, for further help, do check out our website, satisfactorytips.com. I will endeavor to have this guide up at, with the photos within a few days at the latest. But as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to check out my guide. If you did find it helpful, please do drop a thumbs up. It really does mean a huge amount to me. And obviously, if you want to see more satisfactory content, why not join me on Twitch or subscribe to me on here? 
Also, let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see me attempt next. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching. And as always, ciao for now.